بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد in a beautiful hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam making clear for us about the halal those things that are lawful and those things which are unlawful and a qaida in the sharia or principle for us to protect yourself protect your deen protect yourself from shubahat from doubtful things how do you know something's lawful or unlawful an abi abdullah nu'man ibn bashir radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul inna al halal bayyan wa inna al haram bayyan wa baynahuma umur mushtabihat la ya'lamuhunna kathir min an nas fa man attaqa shubahat faqad istabara li dinihi wa irdihi wa man waqa fi shubahat waqa fi al haram kal ra'i yurai hawl al hima yushiku an yarta'a fi ala wa inna li kulli malk malak hamma ala wa inna hamma allah muharramahu ala wa inna fi fil jazid mudghatan إذا صلحت صلح الجزد كله وإذا فسد فسد الجزد كله ألا وهي قلب رواه بخاري ومسلم. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, which was narrated by uh, Abi Abdullah Nu'man ibn Bashir رضي الله تعالى عنهما, he said that I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say, verily the lawful is clear and the unlawful is clear, and between them are doubtful things that most of the people are unaware of. So whoever wants to be safe, by, uh, safe in their religion, they should uh, fear or stay away from those doubtful things. And then they will be safe in their, their, their religion and their honor. And whoever in, indulges in doubtful things, then they will fall into the haram. They will fall into that which is impermissible, similar to the way the sheep herder uh, grazes his sheep in, the, in an open pasture. And then he falls into the pasture of someone else. And verily, the boundaries that very verily every king has his boundaries and the boundary of a law is his is the prohibitions and verily in the body is a piece of flesh a morsel of flesh if it is sound then the whole body is sound if it is sick then the whole body is sick and verily it's the heart and this is narrated in bukhari and muslim in this hadith there are many many benefits but two main benefits I just wanted to mention from this hadith is the importance of safeguarding your honor and your religion by staying away from those doubtful matters. For example, if you don't know whether something is lawful or unlawful, then you should ask. You should ask those people who have knowledge about those issues in, in order to be able to know and safeguard yourself from falling into Muharram to following into those things which displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Salaf of this Ummah, the pious predecessors, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, they were very serious that they would even leave some of the mubahat, those things which were permissible, in order that were permissible, uh, you know, to do, but yet they were not, either they were disliked or they, they were just mubah, they were permissible in order to safeguard falling in and prevent themselves from falling into the Muharram. So this shows how much taqwa they had. They had taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, that they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by staying away from his prohibitions and doing the things that he commanded subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another benefit I wanted to mention from this hadith is the importance of the heart. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, In the field, that the Prophet ﷺ said, that verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. That if it becomes sick, the whole body is sick. And if it becomes, uh, if it is healthy, then the whole body is healthy, and verily it's the heart. Because you see that when a person, if their heart is sick, meaning that they, and we're not talking about necessarily physical sickness, we're talking about when their heart is sick from either from sinfulness or sick from, uh, from wanting to cause harm to other people 
or or what have you. They feel a sense of hopelessness. And an example I can think of just even recently, uh, as it happened in the news just yesterday, uh, where a man in downtown Seattle, he uh, obviously had a sense of hopelessness and a sense of sickness and very little self-worth, so much so that he, out of anger, he shot a, a bus driver then he fled. Then he was killed by police. But he was having a shootout with the police. This is not a sign of a clean and healthy heart. Why? Obviously, we can't go into his heart and make those judgments. But the signs are there that he did not seem as a healthy person. Why? He was not a content person. He was an angry person, a person with spiritual disease in that sense. Why? Because he was willing to act upon that and cause harm to others. So when the heart is healthy then the body will be healthy and a healthy heart will act upon that healthiness. For example, a person who has uh, a healthy heart and has, you know, kindness and uh, is striving to be a moral person and striving to be, uh, to, to, ha- to have happiness and spread happiness, that by, by spreading that happiness, they're acting upon what's in their heart. If they, if they have an intention behind that. And as the Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith, in the Ma'malu bin Niyat, verily actions are tied to the intentions, are tied to the intentions. So that we have to know, as believers in Islam, that we have to have an intention behind our actions, that we should strive to do righteousness in order to please Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, the one who created us, the one who gave us the ability to uh, take another breath, the one who blessed us to see another day, the one who blessed us to be able to see the beauty of this creation that we see before us. This place that we're in now is a place of great, immense beauty. And this is from the creator of the heavens and earth. It wasn't from our doing. He can take it away from us, and He's the one who who brought about this creation. So because He gives you those ni'am, those those blessings and those favors, that you should act upon it with a healthy heart and by sharing righteousness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins and bless us to be of those people who are righteous and bless us with al-nafi, rizqan tayyibu, amana mutaqabbilan, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyin the Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Johnny's getting a little bit into the motor drive there, so sorry. Oh, that's...